Hi, welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Today's video is special because I am recording live performance tuning on a customer's production server. Yes, so thanks to our customer, they allowed and agreed that I could record this video and share some learnings with you. Today, in a span time of about an hour, we solved two cases. This video represents the first case and second was even more interesting than first one, which I'm going to record in another video. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to blur out the database name and client name, etc. Uh, for obvious reasons. There is no zoom it on this production server. So you will have to kind of watch carefully. Fonts are small in the result pane, etc. But nonetheless, um, you will have some good learning. So this first case, of course, was simple and straightforward, um, yet uh, some learnings are there. Let's get started. There is a table called email log. And here is a very simple select statement that is retrieving one attribute from this table and a few predicates out there. Now I am running this select query in a specific database. Let's call it as client one for the sake of this demo. And then I'm going to run this query again in another database, which is let's say client two. And the problem is that this query takes about 10 seconds in the first client, client one database and runs in less than a second in the other database. Everything is identical and, and still it does take that much difference. So let's see what's going on. So we turn on actual execution plan. Let's go and fire up the query and it's running. And as I said, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds. Let's see how much time it takes. Now, once we get the output, I will be drilling down further to see exactly what's going on. So you, you have an empty result set here, which is fine. I won't be able to zoom in as I said. So the first thing that I see in the execution plan, when you hop over to the execution plan is that there is a clustered index scan that is happening and SQL server is recommending a non clustered index as well. So no non clustered index scan or seek straightforward clustered index scan. There are some predicates like you can see on status and schedule date. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, are there other indexes on this table? So if I do a SP help index email log, let's go and see that there seems to be only one index, which is the clustered index. And probably it is auto created by the virtue of having primary key. So there is no non clustered index. And this query takes about 10 seconds rather um, what 12, 15 seconds. Now let's take this query to the other client. Let's call it client two and run this same query. Let's go and execute and look at this. This runs in less than a second. Let's turn on actual execution plan here as well. And uh, let's go and execute this again. Go to the execution plan, same clustered index scan. And again, you're getting a non clustered index recommendation. So two similar queries identical. You run them on two separate customer uh, databases. Of course, there has to be a differentiating factor. That's the reason why you see about 10 seconds in one database and about less than a second in another database. Now let's jump over to the slow version, which is the first client client one. Now when a query is running slow, it's, it's taking about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. There are a few things that you may want to see. You may want to see the execution plan and we just saw the execution plan. Uh, sorry, not this one, the one that runs the um, for the query. And there's nothing much in the execution plan to investigate other than you see that this is just a clustered index scan bunch of pages that are being scanned. There are no non clustered indexes. So I want to find out that when this query is running, is it really waiting on a specific weight type? What's blocking it inside the engine when it when it's running? Now I'm going to take certain steps and there is an approach that I'm going to follow. And this is very ad hoc troubleshooting. I don't have any predefined methodology that I'm trying to implement here. This request just came over. We hopped onto the server and started doing X, Y, Z. So I've just put up simple queries here that I'm running and I'm troubleshooting this. You may take any other approach that you feel comfortable with. So I have looked into the execution plan. As I said, this is a simple cluster index scan. Let's jump over and fire this DMV sysdm OS waiting task where session ID is 80. 80 is the session ID where I'm running this. And what I want to do is run this and hop over to the other window and just run it a few times to see what is this query waiting on. I can see page IO latch SH. Let's just refresh a few times 
and you can see that constantly page io latch sh wait type is being encountered now this correlates well so i have a long scan that is going on and it's reading data from the disk and when there is a delay in reading these data pages from the disk sql server will encounter or apply this page io latch wait type now um i just pulled up a new query window and i i wrote this dmv with session id 80 well um you may have more automated way of doing things and if the query is not really running that long you may want to turn on extended events and create a session and track um an event called wait info and record a whole lot of stuff yes that will be a good systematic approach but as i said again we're just doing ad hoc troubleshooting here right now so what do we have what info do we have right now clustered index scan long scan and constant page io latch sh sh stands for shared which means we're just reading data and this data doesn't seem to be in memory and that is why we are encountering page io latch this is reading from disk these are two things that we know now now do you want to go to client 2 and try to figure out the wait type there as well i don't think so because there the query runs in less than a second so what are you really going to troubleshoot it's just all fine there and it's a clustered index scan so there's no reason to just kind of go and try to find out any wait type let's come back to this customer now when i have long scans and i have page io latch sh i want to find out what's the size of the table or rather what's the size of this clustered index and let's say how many pages are there in the table itself so what we can do is sp space used and if i execute this i can see that the data size here seems to be a little over any average table so about 5 gb or so 5.5 gb that's the size of the table not a small table but not a very big table also now i also want to know the number of i mean the uh, the levels of indexes etc and if there is anything to do with fragmentation though the predicates are not really on the key column yet i just want to have those numbers with me so i'm going to run sysdmdb index physical stats to find out some stats uh, uh, index uh, information and i can see that <clears throat> there is fragmentation but not very high just like 39% which is fair enough and what catches my attention is that this particular table has in row data and it also has lob data which means there is lob data email log that's the name of the table so it's ringing some bell maybe uh, the designers of this uh, schema probably have created a column to store the body of the email in um, nvarcan max or xml i don't know we go, got to figure that out now if you look at the fragment count and average wow pages count page count so you have 170k and you have about 520k in lob data so lot of pages right so about 5 gb of data size and lot of pages here now is this the same in the other table also um and for the other client client 2 that is something that we need to do i i immediately want to see that first so i jump over to the other client and let's run this physical index stats there and what we see yes the same structure however the number of pages are relatively less so it's about 26k uh, for the index and about 160k for uh, the lob pages so it's about kind of one third to one fourth somewhere in between that's the difference from this one to that one now the question that comes to my mind and, and probably some kind of immediate conclusion that we may want to derive that the other table in for the other client the data size is let's say three times to four times more and it takes about 12 seconds by that simple arithmetic does it mean that for this client it should take about two to three seconds isn't it if it's just about scanning the data and you scan four times more so you take four times more time but that doesn't happen this happens much much more quickly just to remind you if i run this again let's click on execute it's done do you see that it's done so it's taking less than half a second so that mathematics doesn't really play out very well though we know that the size of data is at least one third or one fourth of that table where the problem is now let's look at the size of the data for this one also so if we do sp space used here 
and look at the data size it's just about 1.4 gb so this is 1.4 gb that was about 5.5 gb so about something where between one third to one fourth let's go back to the uh, the problematic version of the query which is for client one now we know it's a scan we know it's reading from disk and uh, we know the sizes now what i want to find out is when this query runs, how many pages is it reading from disk? That is something that I want to know. And I will turn on set statistics time and IO on. Time is something that we don't need. We need IO information, but that's fine. Let's go and run this. And while this is running, and I will tell you, I ran this a couple of times and that was the deal breaker. That is where I got my answers. And I will tell you how I got my answers. And what I can do is I can turn on set statistics IO and time for this one as well for client two where things ran beautifully and let's go and run here as well. Okay. And is this done? Yes, this is done. So let's go back to the first client where there were problems and go to the messages tab. And what you can see here is that, um, again, sorry, I can't zoom in here. Okay. This one can be zoomed in. So you can see that read ahead reads is about 170 K, which means 170 pages were being read from disk. Um, so physical reads and read ahead reads, these are all physical IO and logical reads will of course happen because there is physical reads. Now let's go back to the second client and see what's going on here. For the second client, there is no physical read. There's no read ahead reads. There is no physical reads. There's only logical reads. Wow. This is interesting. So what happens for client one, when you run this workload, the same query, there's a lot of physical reads happening. If I run this a second time, let's go and run this a second time while I'm talking to you. When I ran this a couple of times, I saw that it is always doing physical reads, but for the other client, client two, it is always logical reads. Physical reads means physical IO and physical IO is much slower than logical IO. Logical IO means those data pages are in memory they are in ram and are much faster available than physical io very quickly at least five to six times faster so and but for this one it's always physical io which means for some reason sql server is going to the disk reading the data displaying the result to the client and discarding the pages from the buffer the buffer is being cleared maybe whole all of it or partially that we can figure out later but that's happening that's why it's going back to the disk again and again now i ran it a second time while i was talking to you and you can see that it again did a physical read and what about this fellow right here let's go and run this a second time and this is live on the production server and i'm just showing you the behavior between the two both the databases are on the same server let's go and check this one and this is again only logical reads no physical reads that you can see and you can do it as many times as you want. And I've just done it and I see that that's the behavior. So the memory buffer algorithm, the LRU algorithm, the way it's computing things, what it's trying to do here is maybe this server is not very high on physical memory. The amount of physical memory may be very low, maybe 12 or 16 GB low end production server. But then maybe the physical memory, available physical memory is not enough for the buffer to SQL Server memory algorithms to decide that they want to, it wants to keep this 5.5 GB worth data in memory. And I just wanted to troubleshoot that. This is 5.5 GB worth of table reading 170 K pages every time you run this query. So what I did, I just wrote a query here to see, um, for this database, right? Client one, which tables are right on the top and you can, um, okay, not the database. We want to, sorry, I will have to blur that out. We want to see only the table names. So you can see email log is right on the top there about 378 MB is being used and the table is much, much bigger. The table is much, much bigger, but it's only consuming 378 MB. Uh, it's giving only 378 MB for email log, which means yes, it's reading huge amount of data and then it's flushing it out again. That's quite evident. Let's go back to client two and see what is client two doing. So how much memory is being allocated for email log? on client to where the query runs very fast and it is allocating a lot of memory and about 204 MB for email log on this one. Here the table is relatively smaller 
and probably it decides to keep those pages in memory. Maybe there are not other workloads that are running, but maybe in the other one, there are more workloads running. So there's more heavy churning out of pages from, uh, in the memory. Wow. So this is what the conclusion is that this is a huge table and it's not, it's deciding not to keep all the pages in memory and that's why it's flushing it out. Hope this was good learning. Well, then what's the solution? Well, the solution has been uh, two solutions that we have given to the customer here where uh, we tell them that uh, they didn't have email from here. They had a few attributes. This query was actually modified by me when I was troubleshooting. So first thing, we only told them to choose few very selective columns that they want and probably create a non-clustered covering index so that the scan goes really fast and only the non-clustered index is scanned. And we don't want to touch LOB. That's probably there for some other reason. So don't touch the LOB pages. Only scan the non-clustered index and get the uh, data out. We also advise them to truncate this table. This table had three years of email log, huge data. So we told them to truncate this and put archive into another table. Um, these were uh, the two recommendations that were given. And probably by the time this video is done, those would be implemented. Yeah, and um, of course, this is uh, this is an application-wide implementation. So even though the query runs pretty good here, it will still have the same uh, uh, result. Now, before we wind up the video, why not run this again and see what's whether it's physical I/O or logical I/O? And for this one again. So we did this a couple of times. So here again, no physical reads, only logical reads. And what about this one, which is still executing done 14 seconds. It takes and you go to the messages tab and you can again see all physical reads, right? So friends, sometimes when you may have this kind of uh, disparity between uh, a query between two servers, between two databases, a schema and the query being identical, look into some of these metrics and these simple tools, uh, native tools come so handy, the execution plan, the information that you get from set statistics time and IO comes very, very handy. Hope you liked the video. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, do share it. If you're watching it on YouTube, do subscribe. I'm available on Twitter, A underscore Bunsel. SQL Maestros is also available at the rate SQL Maestros. And um, uh, yeah, on SQLMaestros.com, you have many, many more videos. Uh, consider becoming a free member so that you can access the complete video library. We are constantly coming up with free events each month. And there are master classes and video courses, a lot of learning on SQL Maestros. Hope this was useful. See you soon in another video, the second case. Goodbye.